Welcome to this tutorial for the craft artist professional converting a heart embellishment to a frame using Convert to Curves. Watching a recording I had made of Michelle demonstrating serif craft artist on Create and Craft recently, she had an inquiry from a viewer asking if it was possible to make a heart shaped embellishment from the Daisy Trail Cupid kit into a gold frame. Michelle tried it out on air by using the usual quick and simple way to convert an image to a frame. Finding your embellishment, dragging it over onto your workspace, opening your frames tab, popping the embellishment into your frames tab, and then bringing that out and checking if it works. Unfortunately, because this isn't such a straightforward heart shape, it didn't work. Instead, Michelle demonstrated how you can make your own gold heart frame from quick shapes and adding one of the metallic effects. A thread was raised in the Daisy Trail forum about Michelle's alternative. It was called Making Gold Heart Frames Demo. And one of the responses mentioned that you can indeed convert this embellishment to a frame and linked to the Creating Smart Photo Frames in Digital Scrapbook Artist tutorial, which is one of the Daisy Trail video tutorials. I knew as well from making the Word Art Frames uh, tutorial last year that it should be possible to convert this embellishment into a frame. It follows a similar approach to that mentioned in the tutorial. They just both take a bit more time and fiddling around. As I started to try this out, I realised that there is also another way to do this, which possibly works a little better for this kind of frame, one that's not straightforward and symmetrical. Let me say, that is not really 100% symmetrical. It's still a little time consuming, but it does work well. So, we have our non-working frame on the workspace. If we go to our Layers tab, layer 1, and we have the frame here. Open that out, and we've got the frame bitmap, and we have the poly curve. The poly curve is where the photograph is supposed to snap into, and as we can see, it's not working the way it should. This is what we need to change to make our frame work. So we're going to replace this poly curve with a working one. So this is where you can use the approaches mentioned in the two tutorials mentioned previously, or you can use the Convert to Curves approach. So with our non-working frame still on the workspace, we draw a quick shape heart to roughly fill the inside of our embellishment, our frame. Now you can see from this, if we zoom in a little, there is no way that you're going to be able to get this quick shape heart to fit this frame. There's always going to be tiny little gaps where the photo won't snap in. So what we do now, we keep the quick shape heart selected, add a colour to it, a colour fill, and we'll knock that transparency down so that we can see the frame through it. So while the quick shape heart is still selected, and you can see we've got this little edit here, if we edit the quick shape that's just going to allow us to um, make the heart. Well, pretty much that's about the only thing you do. So that's no good to us. So we go up to Tools, Convert to Curves, and now you notice that this has now changed to Edit Points down here in the bottom right. So if we click on this, and then we click on the edge of our quick shape heart, you see these blue nodes appear. And it's these blue nodes, a little bit bigger again, it's these blue nodes that we're going to use to tweak the heart to fill the shape. So you just pop on the end and just drag them out. So 
This can take a little bit of time, obviously. And if you're like me and a little bit OCD about this, you can spend ages on. If you find you get too many nodes appearing, you can always click on them and hit the delete key and that will get rid of them. And so you just keep going, tweaking away. you get it the way you want. I tend to pop it so it's just inside the frame so you know that you're not going to get any gaps. see a bit more clearly what it is I'm doing. And you just keep going until you're happy. You get a big one like that when you take things it's no problem you just drag it over go back there, have a quick look and if you feel quite happy with what you've got there and on the whole that's probably not too bad. If there's any problems all you need to do is select it, go back to your edit points and you can just go back in and tweak a little bit more. Click your back arrow. And when you feel happy that that's uh, filled in all the gaps, we now need to turn this quick shape heart into a polycurve for our frame. So we go back to our layers tab, and you can see now that the closed curve that we've made sits here above the frame bitmap and polycurve. So what we need to do now is to drag this closed curve into the frame area below the frame bitmap but above the poly curve. And don't be surprised if your frame disappears, that's quite normal. We then go onto the poly curve, click the delete key on your keyboard and it's gone. And now if we open up our frames tab, get rid of that old non-working one, draw this across bring it back out and we should now find that it will accept our photograph and you can just twiddle away with your photo to get it just right and there is your basic functioning frame so that immediately has changed your embellishment into the frame but what we can do as well is we can add effects to this frame. So if we move that out, go back to the frames, bring back on the original new working frame. And if we click on this little icon here, select frame object, what we can do now is go across to the 
effects panel and we can apply any of these any of these effects to it. We just apply the metallic one, apply the metallic gold, click the back arrow, and we've now turned that frame into a nice gold metallic frame. Check again, it'll accept a photograph. Yep, and that's working nicely. Okay, and you can sort of spend as much time as you like sorting out your photograph. So there we have our gold metallic frame. So what we can do now is drag this into our frames tab to start building our set. An alternative is that you can bring this frame out again and select the frame object. And this time if we right click to bring up the filter effects panel, you can now add various effects. For this exercise I've kept the effects very simple, but it can be a lot of fun and very interesting to play about with the various effects by sliding, moving the sliders and changing the, the um, values. It's always easy to undo anything if you don't like it. But for this we're going to keep it straightforward and simple, so I've just clicked the bevel and emboss and left it at the default settings. And also the 3D effects, and again left it at the default settings. As you can see here now, that's put this effect upon our frame, so we OK that. And we've now got a nice effect on the frame. We can drag that into our frames tab to keep it. Once again, <coughs> should now find that we'll accept a photograph quite nicely. So you can do this any number of times you like, uh, with a variety of effects to build up um, a series of um, frames. So we have gone from this a simple embellishment to the plain frame, frame with the gold metallic effect and a frame with embossing and 3D effects applied. And you can see those in practice there, the plain frame, gold metallic and your own personal effects applied. When you've finished, remember to save your work as usual and to save the DigiKit when reminded if you wish to keep it for future projects. I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial, that it's all made sense and that you've found it useful. You can find a PDF copy of this video and more examples of my work and a few other video tutorials on my crafting blog http colon forward slash forward slash Karen's crafting nook dot blogspot dot co dot uk. I hope you'll pay a visit and perhaps leave a comment or even subscribe via RSS or email. Thank you very much.